Hi everyone, I hope you're well today. Welcome to my channel. On today's video, we'll be doing some DIY wreaths. Now I watched a lot of tutorials on how to do wreaths with yarn. And when I started practicing for this video, I realized that I was watching pretty much the same method in each tutorial, except they're using different weights of yarn. So I think that's even better because you can get a really different look by just using a different yarn. So let's get started. So for today's video, we'll be using a couple of different weights of yarn. So I've got this yarn here that we'll be using. And then this yarn over here that we'll be using. This yarn has a really nice sheen to it. I think it's really pretty. And I got both of these at Michael's. For this yarn here, we're gonna be using a crochet hook because the yarn weight is small enough that we can't really do it very well with our fingers. For this yarn here, we'll be using our fingers. It's just thick enough that it works to do it that way. Now, if you've seen chunky wreaths on Pinterest at all, they use a nice roving yarn is what they call it which is like this. Now, I bought this yarn to do a chunky wreath with, but unfortunately, my puppy got a hold of it, dragged it across the yard. My husband didn't know what it was, picked it up, threw it out. I dug it out of the trash because it's $25 a pound, but unfortunately, it's just a little bit too messed up to do anything with at the moment. I'm gonna figure out something to do with it, but a wreath isn't gonna quite work. But we've got these two, foam wreath forms that we'll be using too. And it's a really simple method. We'll be doing the same thing for both yarns, except this one we'll be using a hook and this one our fingers. So let's get started. So we'll start with this yarn right here. And I'm just using a crochet hook that the yarn calls for. Your skein, the paper on your skein will tell you the size of hook or needle that you need to use right here. And so that's what I'm gonna be using. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to make a slip knot. I just take two fingers like that and wrap my yarn around. And then I stick my long working tail through my fingers and pull it through and then I let go. I think that's a weird way to do it, but that's how I do it. And then you can just tighten it onto your hook. Make sure not to pull your slip knot too tight at first. It'll make it a little bit harder. Make sure your tension is slack with your skein so that it's not tugging too hard. So I am right-handed. I have the tail over here and then my skein is at the top left of my wreath. I'm going to lay my yarn on the wreath just like this. I'm gonna take my yarn and grab underneath my wreath, pull this working yarn up to my hook and hook it on so I have two loops right here. I'm going to kind of trap this working yarn underneath my wreath by kind of just pushing on it and I'm gonna take it up to the top like this. I'm gonna grab it with my hook and I'm gonna pull it through these two loops. This is where it makes it easier for you not to have too tight of a slip knot when you're pulling it through that slip knot loop. There. We just did our first stitch. We do exactly that all the way around the wreath. So let me show you that again. I'm gonna reach underneath my wreath, grab my yarn, hook it onto my crochet hook, kind of trap this yarn underneath my wreath by kind of pressing just softly, take it up and hook it on my hook, take this loop and pull it through these two loops here. So I went through the first loop and now through the second. A couple of 
tips to make sure your loops don't get too tight. I kind of slide mine over this fatter part of my hook to kind of stretch them out a little bit so that they don't get too tight on me. It just makes it harder to work with if they get too tight. I'm finding that if I kind of, when I hook that second loop, kind of hold it with my thumb and then pull the yarn up and around and kind of create some tension that makes it a little bit easier. Oops, and now if that happens and you lose your, your loop, no big deal, just start that stitch over. Now, as you go around, especially depending on what color of yarn and wreath form you have, you'll want to scrunch your braid kind of together a little bit. Now, mine looks pretty good. I'm using white yarn plus a white wreath form, but you can kind of see right here that you can see the foam. So you'll just want to gently push your yarn together like this just to fill in any gaps. The chunkier weight of yarn that you use, the faster this whole process will go. As you get closer to your tail, make sure you don't get it mistaken for your working yarn. Just try to keep it out of your way. Okay, now that we're getting towards the end, let's just check really closely to make sure. See, I have some foam right here, so I just wanna scrunch that. Just make sure we're getting it covered. Okay, so you can see that my ending point where I am right now with my hook is really close to where I started, which is right here with my knot. And I think we're pretty much there. If you're satisfied with how your wreath is looking as far as having your foam covered and everything, we're gonna say this is probably the end. So all you're gonna do is take your working yarn here this is the tail from the beginning. So we're gonna take it and loop it through our hook and just pull it through. We're gonna take our scissors and cut it. And then take it and just pull it out. And so you have a couple of knots here that kind of join at the bottom, top, whatever this is gonna be. This would actually be, I think, a really good spot for the top if you're gonna hang it from a door because you'll have some ribbon at the top, most likely, that'll cover these knots. But all you do is you take them and you weave them back through your work. So I would take this yarn and I would weave it this way. And I would take this yarn and I would weave it this way. So they kind of tug it closed as you're working. So I'm gonna take this plastic yarn needle and I'm just going to thread my yarn onto it. I'm gonna try to go down as far as possible. Pull out your tail and I'm just gonna snip it off. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. Wow, not gonna lie, this is a little hard to get threaded. Your braid isn't too messed up if you do it that way. And I am going to just take them both and snip the end just like that. For this wreath, I think you have a few different options. That braid is so small that I almost feel like it would be really pretty and give you a modern wreath if you flipped it over and had the braid just in the back and hung your wreath like this. And then we could put some florals either on like the bottom of the wreath or maybe one on the top and one kind of on the bottom corner like that and just hot glue some florals. So I think we're gonna do that with this one just to make kind of more of a modern style wreath. I've got my hot glue gun warming up, waiting to glue the florals onto this wreath. And so while we're waiting for that, 
let's move on to our second wreath that we're going to do, which was with this chunkier yarn here that I got at Michael's as well. This is a number seven. It's chunky enough that we're going to be able to use our fingers and we won't need to use a crochet hook, which is exactly the way you would make one of those um, chunky wreaths with the roving yarn. I'll put a picture of that here so you can see what that would look like. But with that yarn, you would also use your fingers the exact same method that we're doing here today. So we're going to do the same thing as before, and that is we're going to make a slip knot. Remember that I do it weird. Got about this much tail. And we're going to put two fingers through our slip knot and just pull it tight so that we have a tight knot on our hands. And we're going to do the exact same thing that we just did, but we're going to do it without the hook. So we're going to lay our yarn across the top of our wreath and our two fingers are going to act as the hook. We're going to reach underneath the wreath, just like before, grab the yarn loop it onto our two fingers so that we have two loops right here. Kind of keep it trapped underneath your wreath. Grab it and pull this yarn, your working yarn, through your two loops. I usually take my two fingers and grab it like that and then pull it through. Okay, and you'll notice that I'm pulling and the side of the loop that's on my two fingers that is pulling is on the top. You can see that if you happen to drop a stitch or something, you wanna put it back on your fingers like that. So for this, we wanna make sure we keep it fairly tight. We want it to look fairly consistent across. So we're gonna make sure it's pretty tight on our two fingers all the way across, just like that. So let's do that one more time. We're gonna grab it, pull it up, Hook it around our fingers. Keep it kind of trapped underneath the wreath form. Pull it up. I'm gonna grab this right here with these two fingers and pinch it. And I'm gonna pull it through my two loops, just like that. I'm gonna put it back on my fingers and my working yarn is kind of towards the top or the back of my fingers, just like that. And you can see we're already starting to make the pretty braid. This wreath is going to go much faster because the yarn is so much thicker. love how how um, glossy and shiny this yarn is I think it's so pretty but I'm gonna stop there because I'm just about out of yarn you can see that I pretty much covered the entire form now the reason I'm just about out of yarn is because I did one other wreath with this exact same yarn I'll show you I did this wreath as well, and this wreath I did with a metal frame that is kind of flat. I'll put a picture here for you to see what I'm talking about. And I left the tails kind of longer on this one in case I wanted to hang them from the tails. But you could also do a ribbon with this one too. And so this is the same yarn, just two different wreath forms, and it looks quite a bit different. So you can get a lot of different looks with this yarn. And then if you wanted to use the back, it would look like that. And if you wanted to use the back of this one, it would look like that. And of course you can always move your braid around if you want it to be like on the inside of your circle, you can move it around like that, or you can move it to the center of your ring like that, or the outside edge, just kind of whatever you prefer. So we're gonna finish this off the exact same way we did the other one. We have our loop here and we're just gonna pull it through. And I'm gonna take my two tails actually and just tie a little bit of a knot. Okay, 
Okay, so you do have a little bit of a bump down here, but the yarn is so thick that it pretty much covers it up for you. And then we can take our tails and I would weave this one through this way since this is kind of the way that it naturally is flowing and just weave this one through this way and we'll try to conceal them as best we can here. Let's try it with our little crochet hook and see if we can just tuck that in here. So this is my tail I'm trying to tuck. I'm just poking my hook, approaching it from the other end, trying to get underneath all this really thick, beautiful yarn. Oh, and there I am. I'm gonna try and just wrap it around and pull it through. There we go. Okay. Kind of spread that out a little bit and I think that's pretty well concealed so we'll take our scissors and just snip off the end of our tail and there we go this one's all done I think this one looks beautiful just plain just like it is I think I would hang it just like that. So pretty. So that chunkier wreath took pretty much no time at all, maybe like five to 10 minutes. My hot glue gun is all ready to go. And I've got some florals here that I just purchased at Walmart. So we're gonna try to arrange these just kind of around the wreath and um, just hot glue them on. So I couldn't really find uh, like wire cutters or anything. I'm just using these pruners to cut these um, plastic fake flowers. up ribbon is a really nice option. I like this one and a half inch satin ribbon, but, but you could use whatever ribbon that you liked. I would actually suggest hanging these with Velcro. So I would mount these command Velcro strips. This one is sticky on the back side. I would stick that to the top of my door and then I would staple this one onto my ribbon that's what I would suggest just because these are removable and it won't do any damage to your door. So I just cut my satin ribbon to length and then I took this other piece of Velcro and stapled it to the end of my ribbon that will be going on the top of my door. And I'm going to attach this to the other piece of Velcro that's sticky on the top of my door. And I'll show you that here in a second. So I stuck this other piece of Velcro up here and this is removable because it's one of those command strips of Velcro and then I'm going to take this piece that I stapled my ribbon to and just push it onto the Velcro just like that and then we've got this pretty little wreath hanging on our door that is totally removable and we'll shut the door just to make sure it shuts Perfect. So this wreath I'm going to put on our front door and my sticky back on my Velcro has really worn off. So I'm just going to put a fresh little adhesive thing on the back of this and then get it hung up the exact same way. So that made this one just a little bit thicker, but I think it's going to be okay. So it kind of looks like this and this is the sticky side, the white side. I'm just going to put it on top of the door. Try to get it nice and centered. Push down. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on wreath making. The best part of it, I think, is how customizable it is between the types of yarn that you use or the embellishments you add. You can make it personal to a person's taste. You can embellish it for a holiday or a season. And it's super easy using the same method for all these different designs. 
Before you go, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button, like, share this video, hit the bell notification if you want notification of new uploads, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.